Hi, Tim Unker here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to install Vim on Windows 11. And this is not the uh, Windows subsystem for Linux way. We're first going to install GVim, which is the graphical Vim. And then I'm going to show you how you can use it on the command prompt. Um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about um, how it might be an advantage for you over something like VS Code or Sublime Text or something like WebStorm, which are also great development environments. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so I'm going to open up a browser here and let's go to Google and I'm going to search for the Vim text editor. Okay, and the first site that comes up should be www.vim.org. I'll click on that and we have this this website here on the left hand side we have this uh, download button so I'll click on download and we have some options for Windows we have the 32-bit installer we have the 64-bit installer 32-bit zip package 64-bit zip package if you have a much older computer the 32-bit installer might be for you if you're a 32-bit computer uh, I have a 64-bit computer so I'm gonna click on that and download that file. Once that's downloaded, I'll click to open the file or my downloads folder or go to my downloads folder and click on that. Once I open, it's going to prompt me to make changes to my device. I'm going to say uh, yes, and then this will pop up and I can select a language here. We have some options like uh, Italian, Netherlands, and so on. I'm going to select English because that's my uh, native speaking language. I'll click OK and then a wizard will pop up. I'm gonna click next. I can, I'm gonna accept the terms of the license agreement, click next, and I'll keep it with the typical installation. The options you have are typical, minimal, full, or custom. I'm gonna stick with typical, click next, and I'm gonna keep all of this the same, click next, and click install. And that's gonna run through and install Okay, you have the option of keeping the show readme after the installation is finished. I'm going to uncheck that and just click finish. I can now get rid of this file and close out my browser. Okay, so now I have three different things on my desktop. I have Jim, GVim 9.1, GVim Easy 9.1, and GVim Read Only 9.1. I want to click the top one, the GVim 9.1. So I'll select that. Uh, once that opens, I'm going to pin it to my task work because I'll use it quite a bit. Now you notice here that this is a bit small, okay? So I'm going to get this a little bit larger by increasing the font size. So I'm going to do a colon, E, and then a space, and then an ampersand, a slash, and do dot gvimrc. That's going to be my gvim configuration file. I'll hit enter. And then that's going to create a new file and I want to go to insert mode by typing I and then I'm going to type in set we font equals now uh, Windows 11 installation to come with the font Cascadia code, which I like I think consolus is the default for most of the stuff, but I'm going to switch to Cascadia code and this shows you how to enter in a font font that has a space in between the name. So I'm going to do Cascadia. and then a slash to escape the space, and then code, and then a colon, H, and then I want the font size. I normally set it at 11, but since I'm doing a video here, let's set it at 16. And I'm gonna escape to go back to normal mode, then colon W to write the file, and then colon Q to quit the file. I can now click on this to open it back up, and we see here we have a much larger font. Now, if you wanna maximize it, which I like to do, uh, I never remember this command, so I'm going to go to my browser and I'm going to search for maximize uh, gvim on start. Okay, and when I do that, uh, the second post here has a super user post, superuser.com, questions 140419. I'm going to click on that. Okay, uh, and if I go down here, and look at this second answer. Uh, it says AU, we enter, this asterisk, simult, uh, tilde X. This works. <laughs> so I'm going to highlight this, control C to copy it, 
and bring them back up gvim here and I'm going to do a colon e uh, and then do the tilde slash dot gvim rc you see we have that first line in here to insert to the line below I just do an o and that opens a new line below and I actually have the ability here with these icons to paste so I'm going to paste get that I'm going to escape go colon w and I can do a colon wq to write and quit that'll write and quit it and now when I open it up we've got gvim opened up maximized across the screen which is the way I like it okay and we can begin to edit the file now before we get into running vim on the command line let me show you something that's uh, pretty cool here So if I bring up my task manager here, we'll note that GVM here is using 6.2 megabytes. Now, so this is one of the advantages uh, that you might find by using this text editor is it runs with a extremely small memory footprint. Okay. Um, if you're looking at something like VS Code, this is gonna be 300, 400 megabytes, which on a modern computer probably isn't a problem. VS Code does run pretty fast on a modern computer. But if you're using an older computer, uh, the 6.2 megabytes might be nice for you, especially, or, or a newer, less powered computer uh, where you're running a lot of other things. Um, this might be an advantage for you. Uh, I think Sublime Text is around 40 or 50 megabytes, the current version. And then um, something like WebStorm is using uh, like one and a half gigabytes, although you can change the uh, memory consumption web store. So not a big deal if you have a more powerful computer, but that's one of the advantages. Another one is, of course, the key bindings, uh, different ways to manipulate text, which I think I'm going to do some tutorials on this. I'm getting back into Vim. Um, you know, I'm not no expert, but it kind of helps me teaching you to remember some of the cool shortcuts. Uh, and I can use this text editor, among others, during school to create some content for my students um, and also do some programming with. Okay, so uh, let's talk about getting Vim running on the command prompt. So I'm gonna close this out and let's close the browser out here. And what I wanna do is go to my file explorer and I wanna to go to this PC, click on that and go to my program files and I'm going to go down and find Vim. So I'll click on that. And I have this Vim 9.1. And if I go down here, I see I have the um, application here. It's located in this folder. Okay. So what I can do is now go back up. I'm going to go back up to this Vim folder here. And I'm going to right click here and Go down to copy as path with the keyboard shortcut. Cut the keyboard shortcut for that is Control Shift C. So I'll copy as path. I can close this out now. I go down to my search and I go to environment variables. And the first thing that should come up is edit the system environment variables. I'll click open. I'll click down here environment variables. Go down here and find path and then select edit. It's going to bring up environment variables and I'll click uh, new and then I'm going to do control V to paste in the environment variables. Now you know that when it pastes it in, it has these uh, quotes here. Okay. So I'm going to delete both the quotes, both at the end at the start, and then I'll click okay, okay, and okay. Now I go to my search, type in CMD. That'll bring up my command prompt click open and let's type in Vim. And there we go. We've got Vim running on the command prompt. Okay. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, please like, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.